All right, Shalom, first and foremost, all praise and glories unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Rechach, Kodash, that belong to our apostles, the bishops, the elders of the great millstone. And greetings, say, taste his blessings, much love unto you, hopefully, like Shalom unto you. Your brothers are quiet with a quick video, well, you know, with a video here. And just want to um actually go back in this video here on the left, uh, just, just upload it. Um, and um, I didn't qualify a certain uh, part of the scripture. And so um, as it was brought to my attention, I figured uh, I might as well not only qualify it, but uh, make that into another video. So much happening, tying into this, okay? And so uh, here, I'll start reading that at Revelation, the 13th chapter. I'll start at verse 11. And then... Uh, well, wilderness is edifying. I'll get into a little wilderness edifying, which, uh, by the way, as you see the, the the title of this video, which was uh, MOTB image, right? Which now that I think back on it, um, I should have made sure that I that I did go over what that image is. Okay, uh, I had it in mind and, and and didn't get to it. I forgot to get to it and and close the video out before I actually tapped into it should have went into it first and so lord willing uh this video is also uh edifying all right so um here in revelation 13 it says and i in verse 11 it says and i beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon okay now this beast um is basically the rebirth of the roman empire all right and, it's, and it ties into, um, how do I say it? It ties into um, the ancient Roman Empire. All right. And now when you go into Daniel, let me get it. All right, this is Daniel chapter two. Okay. And this is going into the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, uh, Daniel 2 and 31. Thou, O king, sawest and behold a great image. The Im the great image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms as uh, of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet of iron and part clay. Now, when you break this image down, you understand um even secular history you'll understand it, and they even have more of this um particular image you know uh documented if you will within the scriptures because it goes back into the babylonian empire which was that golden head matter of fact let me just get an image is is google this is amazing how now you can just google these images and they pop up now all right yeah so this one will work to the great image in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Okay, now this isn't the same image from Revelation the 13th chapter. That the word image there, it's not about the definition of the word more than it is what it's uh, pertaining to. Okay, this is um, this image is actual uh, like a like a figure as you see here on the right. It was part of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, right? And it says here. Um, this section represented the empire of Babel of Babylon, which Nebuchadnezzar was king. So he was in that, that kingdom. Okay. Silver chest and arms, the silver chest with two arms signified the empire of the Medes and Persians. Okay. Which conquered and supplanted Babylon. Yeah. They took over after, uh, the Babylonians bronze belly and thighs. This section Represented the Greco Macedonian Empire of Alexander the Great, which swallowed up Persia. Okay, you can go into the 300 movies and see a little bit of that. All right, it says iron legs. The two legs of iron represented the Roman Empire. Okay, and this is the same empire that our Lord was in. Okay, he, he lived at this time. Right, it says um, after Alexander's death. The Hellenistic uh, Empire continued in a divide form 
a divided form until its divisions were taken over by Rome. The two legs apparently signified the east-west division that characterized the late Roman Empire. All right. And then iron and clay feet and toes extended from the legs are feet and toes of iron mixed with clay. A brittle and unstable mixture because it would not bond well. This re represented the, fi uh, the final phase of the Roman Empire, which will be made up of ten kings, some strong and some weak. All right. Now, <clears throat> that's what's going on in the book of Revelation. Let's go back. Back in Daniel, the second chapter, right? 34 says, Thou sawest till, uh, till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and of clay, and break them in pieces. Okay, when you break that down, it's talking about Yahweh Shah being that stone, okay? And he's who's going to come back and break up uh, that final, which when you see these images, um, you know, t breaking down Daniel, the second chapter, you rarely see, you know, whether it's Christians or whomever make it, most times you'll see um, if it's like a great millstone or, or, or a Hebrew Israelite made poster, or, you know, image of, or, you know, poster, I'll leave it at that. Um, they may have America in there, okay, which when you get into it, it, it it's showing you that that's America because America is, re, um, what's the word I want to use, resembles or, or is modeled after the ancient Roman Empire, okay? And in, and in Revelation, it goes in, into that within this verse here, okay? And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Look, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. A lot of the characteristics of the ancient Roman Empire, um, not only America, but the other uh, NATO EU nations, okay, which goes into the toes and all of those things and the different rulers and all of this. Okay, and it goes into their economies on how strong certain nations were. I mean, it, it, it breaks down, and the apostles have done excellent breakdowns on that, right? But I'm just trying to focus on a, a, a smaller uh, image of it, you know, image of it, a smaller part of that, that full breakdown, right? Which goes back into verse 11, but let me keep reading. It says, and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and called it the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, it's important to understand who deadly wound was healed because the ancient Roman Empire had went down. And that's when you got the Byzantine Empire or the Dark Ages. Okay, but then the Renaissance, or when you look up the word Renaissance. Okay, this is for the word Renaissance, and this is the Oxford languages. Some real quick, it says, The revival of art and literature under the influence of classical models in the 14th through 16th centuries. The culture and style of art architecture developed during the Renaissance. Okay, the revival, <clears throat> excuse me, the revival or renewed interest in something. Resurrection, and that's what it, the, the Roman Empire being resurrected. Okay, be born. Back birth, rebirth. Okay, and it was the rebirth of the Roman Empire. Where rebirth. Uh, the process of being reincarnated or born again. All right. But the verse I kind of want to tap into is this here in the 11th verse, right? It says, and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. And most times when we break this down, all right, this is what you'll come up with, the plebeians. And if you look closely here, the patrician, right? And when you go into those, this is what it means. Because it was social classes, okay? As it is now, okay? And, and believe it or not, you so-called Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're the children of Israel in captivity still under the Romans, if you see it in the same way, okay? As this breakdown is telling you through the Bible, right? And it says uh, the plebeians are a member of a lower social class, right? Lower social classes, all right? And and the understanding that you have to have, it says a commoner in ancient Rome. 
okay, is 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 these are the, the, the two party system. All right, it's still a two party system. Now let's get the other definition. Patrician, right? An aristocrat or nobleman, a member of a long established wealthy family. Okay, and you see that this country is ran by those higher wealth families. Okay, you see that the world, or at least this Western world, is ran by that. Okay, different classes, social classes. Okay, a member of a noble family or class in ancient Rome. Aristocracy, okay. Um, belonging to or characteristics of a long established and wealthy family. Belonging to the nobility of ancient Rome, okay. Also, I found this here with the two-party system in ancient Rome. I believe this was in ancient Rome. This is something now. The op optimates, or optimates, I don't know how they say that in the other language, the best ones and popularities. Okay, the supporters of the people. Now, what do these sound like? It sounds like when you put those two plebeians and patricians and also the optimates in the populares, right? It's showing you the, the, the Republicans and the Democrats, okay? Now, what you a lot of you common people fail to understand, especially you Jakes that really, it's amazing how the two things Jake doesn't want to talk about, you know, the most divisive things are religion and, and politics, which really Jake is like, no, 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 don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. But really, that's the most important things to be talking about. Okay, who is your God and what does your God stand for? And what does it say? What, what does your God say? And, and is there a prophecy with your God? Okay, and then uh, uh, politics, which goes into how your daily lifestyle is. Does your, your, your politics reflect your religion or something different? Well, we've been seeing that the politics aren't reflecting the religion of the people. Well, it... You know, in a sense of you so-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans being lost and not understanding that you're God's chosen people and the Bible is written on your behalf for you to follow after those ways, okay? After the, the, the conservative nature of the Bible, okay? That's how you should be living according to that. And then you have to look at which party puts you in line with those that align with your religion. Okay, when I say party, I don't mean go up there and have Cardi B, or not Cardi B, that's the last time, uh, Meg, Meg the Stallion up there saying, yeah, we know we like our party, and, you know, we're going to support this one and that one, and we're going to shake and then twerk and, you know, just getting that, that situation put out there. Okay, and then you can go and be degenerates and you can go abort children and, and all these other things. When you start looking at the, 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 the reflection of it in the Bible, it was always held in negative regard. Okay, we can't act like the same party that's pushing um, the alphabet soup is, is also um, in, in like manner of, of, uh, of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, now. Here's the main point of this, and I and I got footage on this. Matter of fact, I, I won't even play the footage. I'll just bring up these articles. I don't know if the if YouTube is gonna let let me uh, allow me to put them in the video in the um, in the video description. But let's see here. Okay, and you can see this was on uh, X, right? Uh, talking about Trump says uh, Kamala Harris was never black. She was always Indian. And you've seen the video there and then how um, black, and this has a black woman, but blacks and black women, which you're not even black, man. You people aren't black. So-called Negro Latinos and Native Americans, you're not black. You so-called Negroes or African Americans, you're not that and you're not black, okay? You're, you, that, that is a term thrown on you that, that don't fit you. Just because James Brown made a great song about it don't mean that that's who you are, okay? But when you go into... Um, how her, her, she got contentious when he brought that up and Donald Trump brought it up. All right. And and you people don't, and our people, I can't just say you people, our people don't like to do research and go look up the truth about certain things, you know? I mean, but stuff has started to come out, but 
the point I want to make in this video, and of course we got Candace Owens going into that and showing how she all of a sudden, you know, this lady here all of a cold switch and now she's black and now she wants that black vote. Okay. And she's throwing all the black euphemisms and all these other things that's supposed to catch you and then throw Cardi, um, I keep want to say Cardi B, keep want to throw Meg Thee Stallion and Quavo out there in her Atlanta, uh, Atlanta um, Congress, D DNC. Okay. All to get you people. Now, do I subscribe to Candace Owens? Only in a conservative sense, but I don't subscribe to her particularly. You know? Do I subscribe to Donald Trump? No. Because I understand. But if you if it's about just making better choices, which in discernment, our people suck at it, man. Okay? The scriptures say in Jeremiah 4th chapter, you are sought as children. Okay? Meaning stupid. You have not known me. You don't care to know, nor do you know the Heavenly Father. Okay? Or his ways. Even though we now have the prophets out there teaching our people about the ways of the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Okay? But anytime you can just throw certain stereotypes, you know, that's become part of the culture now, you can throw those things out there at a, at a people and they eat it up. It shows you how destroyed the, that people is. Okay? So... Now I'm going to tap into, um, I, I, this one is just off Quora. They have all kinds of websites going into this, but this one's on Quora. What are, um, it says, what were the political parties during the Roman Republic and what were they like as compared to modern day parties? Okay, and that's where I got a lot of that information from. Okay, the Oppomits. Uh, let's see here. Yep, and it goes into those things, which I wasn't even going to bring that out. Okay, but I, I read into it a little bit. And basically, it, it, it's, it's the Senate, okay, it had, uh, which, you know, started, a, there was a civil war, which we're on the brink of civil war now here in America, and the divide is, is, is political, okay? This is where those divisions come from, okay? See, in the Senate, by the populares, okay? Um, let me read a little bit of this. Politi uh, um, let me see here. I'll start here. It's hard to explain exactly what policies and worldviews they stood for, says, but I'll try. Says, the opponents were somewhat the conservatives of their time, okay? The upper society. And it's the same reason because you Negro, Latinos, and Native Americans are the have-nots. You know, as far as in society, you don't have the money. You 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 choose to to pick the poor uh, um, party, so to speak, instead of uh, based upon religious or lifestyle views, which should, should have been a conservative lifestyle. Okay, it says they were in love with the Republic and the traditions of Rome. They advocated democracy, but they're but only. They're very restrictive and hierarchical democracy in which the noble and wealthy dominated, okay? In which we see that. They always want certain taxes, but, I mean, the breakdown, every, politicians are just corrupt, which is getting to the point that I want to get to, but I'm going to read more first, which is we shouldn't, we don't have a dog in this fight, okay? This is all of them were nobles or wealthy themselves, as all senators were at the time, Rome during the Republic had a rigid class system and the optimates wanted, uh, that the op optimates wanted to preserve. Politicians like the optimates had dominated in Rome for centuries, but as I said, this was a hugely important period in the time, uh, excuse me, in the history of Rome. The massive influx of slaves and the migration of rural Romans to major city centers, uh, included the city of Rome, meant that a class of unemployed city dwellers had formed. The lower class had always been abused by the nobles and the wealthy and had no opportunity for social mobility. Okay, so we're seeing that happen in modern times as well. Because uh, as the scriptures say, um, there's no new thing under the sun. Okay. 
or another quote that they use is um, history repeats itself, right? So they were championed to some degree in the Senate by the populares. Scholars differ on whether the po politicians actually wanted to sincerely aid the working poor of Rome, who at this time lived in dilapidated slums, or whether they were s simply populists utilizing the poor as a working block uh, to the to get elected. Okay, so what's the di there's no difference. It's the same thing. Roman politics were quite violent in this uh, and this period in particular caused a rift in the Roman political world that would lead to several civil wars. Okay, and, and that's what we're starting to hear in, in, in America here. Okay, and this is also showing you that this was that other beast that came up out the sea in Revelation, okay? Showing you that this is that other model, that renaissance, that rebirth. And when you get into other scriptures, that deadly wound was healed. I think it's the 12th verse, that which deadly wound was healed. It was that it was healed because it, it rose up again, okay? Which that was pretty much the point, just to hit a little bit of that. Okay, so back in Revelation, all right? It says, I'll read um, verse 11 again. And I beheld another beast coming out of the, the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now, when you get into um, two horns like a lamb, okay, that's the two-party system, right? Just like ancient Rome. And he spake as a dragon, meaning the, the, the draconian measures, man. There's not anybody... There's language, even with Kamala Harris, and she's being very delicate in how she's saying certain things, but she's even speaking about uh, uh, law and order. Both sides are speaking about that because they're part of the same lamb, so to speak, the same beast, the same animal. Okay? They say uh, uh, left and right wing, but part of the same bird. They say all these, these, these codes that our people just don't pick up on. Okay, he said he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and called it the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast. Now we're back worshiping the ancient Roman Empire structure whose deadly wound was healed. And we also got to know that there were certain practices, you know, the, the alphabet soup and all of those things were, were, were going on in that ancient Roman Empire as well. Okay. So I, I did want to get into that a little bit and just qualify that, showing you that that, that beast and that image as I go further is, is set up because it's that way of life. And only now can that image, as I go back into the, the other video, back in this one here on the left, uh, that image is the way of life that can only truly be achieved with the te technology that's in modern times. They didn't have the technology to fulfill it in those ancient times, which we know prophecy has to be manifest. And this is the end of that manifest to where that 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 beast, where that excuse me, where that image could both live. I'm, I'm going to read it. It says, uh, verse thirteen, and he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And we know that beast system, uh, that fire come down from heaven was that those atom bombs, those hydrogen bombs, and now those those nuclear bombs, okay, from the from World War II, okay? And then we know that those are also going to be used in World War III, all right? <clears throat> and, it, and when you continue on the understanding of it, uh, we also, they made sure they put that those images on film. They had a lot of images of, of the atom bomb being shot off here in Nevada and different parts in the oceans and whatever else, so you can see the power of the technology. And when you, you go back in, in uh, Isaiah, the 54th chapter, it talks about, um, I have created the smith, was blow up the coals. Uh, let me get it. Okay, Isaiah 56, excuse me, 54, verse 16. Behold, I, create, I have created the smith that blow up the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy the heavenly father. Part of his armory was to have those Germans 
create these these um, atomic hydrogen and nuclear bombs. The technology to be forwarded with those bombs that 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 you know hit those the, the Japanese places, you know, the Japanese in World War Two. Okay, and so that sprouted that that miracle. They made sure they put that on, on film. And when you really look at how uh, these James Bond movies, especially those Cold War uh, movies, you'll see that there was always microfilm here and, and plans there because what the German scientists did from watching the movies I picked this up, you know, was basically uh, they sold the bomb technology to one side and then they sold the missile technology, the intercontinental missile technology to the other side, which that goes... Second address, just to be quick about it, second address straight to the point, 16 verse 13, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he sh shooteth are sharp, they shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. And we know regular arrows can't be shot into the end of the world. That's intercontinental, okay? It says, behold, the plagues are sent, and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumes the foundation of the earth. Okay, because it has to fulfill its purpose. Like as an arrow is shot of a mighty archer, returning not backward, even so the plagues that shall be sent upon earth shall not return again. Okay, and that's the, the, the war uh, missiles and the fire of the judgment, because that's how he's going to judge this time, the second death. Is the judgment of fire, okay? As the first death was the Noah flood with water, okay? But also the plagues that lead up to it can't turn back as well. And it says, um, where does it say Egypt as before? The 15th chapter. Yes, in the 15th chapter. Bear with me one second. Yeah. Yep. Uh, verse 11, second edge 15, verse 11, but I will bring them with the mighty hand and the stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and will destroy all the land thereof. We know that didn't happen to ancient Egypt. Okay. But we know that's going to happen to that lake of fire, which will, will be uh, the, the, the continent of North America. Okay. It says, Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High, Yahweh, shall bring upon it. Okay, and it continues on talking about the district. I'll read it. Uh, they that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting and hail and with the fearful constellation. All right. Oops. All right, so showing you how the scriptures um, are depicting these different events to happen in this end time. But that, that Roman Empire had to come back and be reborn. Okay? And that same setup goes into that beast. Okay? And when you look at the countries, those are Edomite-ran countries that make uh, that make up the beast. All right? And no, Russia is not part of the beast. <laughs> I'm glad the deacon got that right. Right? It says, uh, and deceiveth, verse 14, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which is a way of life, which is part of what I was going into as China being that model to the image of the beast, okay, with their complete draconian dictatorship, okay? Where everything is 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 um is is monitored. Uh, I was gonna try to do a different lesson on it, so I'll just tap. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just do that in a different lesson, uh, going more into the image itself. But um, basically, you know, they want to be able to monitor everything. Your your, as I said in this video, your your digital ID, the biometric ID. When they want to use it for the internet, they want to use it for your banking, okay, so on and so forth. And we know it's going to put everything within the, the, the MOTB, okay. 
everything that's connected to you is going to be within that sea hip. All right. It says, uh, yep, that uh, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had a wound by a sword and did live. And that's when it went down, uh, collapsed, and the, the ancient Roman Empire collapsed with this same system, collapsed. The Byzantine Dark Ages came for about a thousand years, which that was referenced within the book of Revelation. Okay, and then it, the rebirth came again. And that's when it's going into the bottomless pit and all of that. That's talking about Europe, that bottomless pit. Okay? And and when you get into it, that that um, the power in the sight of the beast, that they should make an image, now is that time of technology to fulfill that because they couldn't have the godlike power, as I was mentioning in the other video. They didn't have the godlike power um because they didn't have the technology to fulfill it. Now they got cameras, now they got smartphones, now they got computers in everybody's hands. Okay, and they will eventually have that technology with 4G, 5G, and probably 6G, and, and so on and so forth. You know, the technology of it to, to put into people's uh into people's bodies. Where you can't just drive up to somebody like you see in, in South America, they have these guys on these motorcycles, they'll run up and somebody's on their phone, they just snatch their phone and ride off. Okay, well, you can't snatch the sea hip out of somebody like that, okay? So whatever is implanted into you, that's particular to you now because all your, your blood type, your medical records, all those things will be put in there. And only that image can only be fulfilled with the technology that's coming into play today where everything will be contained within that and then um, stored within your body, okay? It's not only in your forehead or in your in your hand it'll be anywhere in your body but those are the main places and when you you do the research on it your your head and your hand particularly your right hand are where the most energy that comes um uh, that that generates in in the human body that generates the most heat in it okay it says uh and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast with that technology right that the image of the beast should both speak, meaning come to life, and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay? Which we know when Yahushua came on the scene over 2,000 years ago in that first uh, Roman Empire, um, he was, with his understanding, he was causing a dissension among the power structure. Because as everything, religion and everything was all set up to keep um, the Romans in power and, and ruling over the Israelites, he came with another message, meaning that you can free, free yourself from the confines of the law, and now you can be saved through faith. Okay, we have the scriptures that come up from, from that time near. Okay, showing us that, uh, and even the miracles that he did in that time, Feeding many with, with, you know, with a few fish and loaves. I mean, just different miracles, healing the sick. All these things that he did, okay, is going to have to be built within us. Like, like we have to really stand on that, okay, and that belief with faith on those things to get through the time that we're coming to. Because this time that we're coming into is going to be like, like never before. It's going to be so perilous, dangerous. I mean, starvation. You know, famines and, and 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 pestilences and sicknesses, and all kinds of things, purge-like conditions, and even worse. Okay, it's going to be going on in the earth, and we have to somehow survive that and keep our integrity and our faith to the Lord. Okay, until until those missiles are dropped on this place and the elect get uh, uh um, taken up out of here. Okay, so I'll read sixteen also. And 17, it says, And he calleth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, is describing that image, right? Buy or sell, save he that had the mark. And that's an easy way to kill you right there, by cutting you off from society. Okay? Because now we also see, and I had an article, let's see if I could pull it up. I apologize, I can't find it. But um, maybe I can Google it. Okay, well, I kind of found enough to show you 
how draconian these things are, right? And this says, um, on June the 28th, 2024, the Supreme Court Rule 63 in the case Grant Grant's Paz uh, versus G. Johnson that cities can enforce bans on homeless people sleeping outside in public places. Okay? But then you cut off the job market. So imagine when the MOTB is in, you can't buy or sell. Okay? So you have you're 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 being tempted. Well, this is why they call it the hour of temptation. You're being tempted and forced into having to take the the MOTB micro C hip. Okay? So the ruling overturned a California appeals court decision that found such laws to be cruel and unusual punishment when there is lack of shelter uh, and there is a lack of shelter space. The ruling states that local governments can enforce these laws without violating the Constitution's limits on cruel and unusual punishments. Okay, and you can see that that's something. Look, Oregon, they got, man, this is happening. Supreme Court level. All right? So this is something going on. So what is that going to force you to have to do? To not be homeless, to not be living outside? You know, which we, we see the UBI coming. We see all these different things coming that are going to lead to fulfilling that image of the beast. Okay? And that's that was pretty much the point. So as I want to go back and, and tie in the ancient Roman Empire, and as the people are, are, are going to get out of control, civil war is going to spark, and as well as just as uprisings, which we know those are part of the, the future prophecies as well. Okay? Speaking of... um. Second Ezra, the fifteenth chapter, um, and then even uh, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Okay, you should know that it has been the, the, that this is the last time. All right, so just want to go into that. Uh, Lord willing, this was edifying to the next one. Um, doing all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashim Yahshua, Bashim Rakhakodash. Double honor to our apostles, the bishops, the elders of the great millstone, and greetings, salutations, and blessings, much love unto you, hopeful elect. Shalom.